What is good, you two? Quinn Way basketball analysis. Let's end out the weekend with one more day of free agency covering. We have big news. Mikael Bridges will, like I said, stay in Phoenix with a four-year, $90 million contract. We already knew that he was going to get around his range. It was just about Phoenix actually agreeing to a deal. It's a surprise that they didn't try to get him all five years, but it do make sense when you look at this team. They still have to see what they're going to do with Aiden. They still have to see what they're going to do with Cameron Johnson and those guys if they want to keep them around. I still feel like this roster has looked better. I still feel like they have grown. They have one of the best backcourts in the entire NBA with CP and Devin Booker. And Mikael Bridges is the perfect complimentary player within this team. A guy that doesn't need the ball, can score off the ball by hitting mid-range jumpers, can hit spot-up threes, can defend and be a switchable guy, and also can play some small ball four, and also can guard ones, twos, and threes, also fours, while also being a guy that can create a little bit. You don't want him doing it, but he can create a little bit off the dribble, and he can make quick decisions. A great complimentary player to a team that already has dominant scorers and already has a, some type of inside presence, and now they are deeper. You want to keep this team together. This is a team that was coming from being at the bottom each and every year to the first time they made the trade for Chris Paul. They're in the NBA Finals. You want to take another chance at trying to win a title as long as you can. You know, you work hard to get your team to a point where they can be a contender. And you are there right now with this current Phoenix Suns team. And last year proved that finishing number two in the entire NBA and second in the West. And you're bringing that same roster that you had last year into this season with more experience, more growth, more hunger because they failed their goal, but also more improvement by now you don't have to figure as much things out because you have the same roster. Now you're a deeper team than you was last year, and you still have room with your young players to continue to get better, and you still have CP, who's a walk-in playoff berth no matter what teams he gets on, and he fits perfectly with this team and you know gives this team a chance to possibly be in the NBA Finals again, depending on what team they play, depending on the matchups. They are just as good as any team in the Western Conference, and you don't want to blow that up just because you don't want to pay people certain money. That's why you talk. That's why you negotiate. You want Mikhail Bridges for five years, but if the best thing is for the team and you can still retain them and resign them, plus give him an offer that he will take and like, and on top of that, Mikhail Bridges is one of the best perimeter defenders in the entire league. It's just a beautiful thing to see this deal finally get done, finally get out of the way. Now they can focus on DeAndre Aiden, even if it takes them into restricted free agency and try to figure out that last piece and then figure out the rest of what they're going to do with this team in the future as Devin Booker is already under extension. And now you will have Mikhail and Aiden under extensions but within the next couple months. And you still locked up Chris Paul on a flexible deal, not only for Chris Paul, but also for this organization. If he gets injured, if you want to get off the contract, or if he's not playing at the same production that he was last year, which is possible because he's going to get older. But even then, you're protected and you're secure and you have flexibility to observe what's the best option for Chris Paul as he gets up in age. So it makes sense to get this deal done. Now we have to see what they did with Aiden. For example, Mikael Bridges averaged 13 points, four rebounds, and one steal. And he did have uh, a shooting split of 50-40 and 84 from the free throw line. So that's the perfect guy that can play on and off the ball, can get out in transition, can hit threes, hit mid-ranges, and he can play within the system um, at the end of the day. So I, I like what they have done, and I like the fact that they brought back the same team but just made them a little deeper. Um at the end of the day, the Celtics will actually waive Jabari Parker. They picked up Jabari Parker basically for a roster spot and a couple million last year. 
the Boston Celtics are going to waive Jabari Parker. His contract was guaranteed for a hundred thousand. At that amount, will go on the Celtics cap sheet for the 2022 season, as he will not play with this team. Parker signed with the Celtics late in 2021, and in regular in 10 regular season games with the Celtics, he gave them 60. I mean, six points on 54% shooting. Parker then averaged 8.5 on 61% shooting as Boston fell to Brooklyn. The Celtics now have 14 players on contracts and one on a two-way contract. That leaves Boston with an open standard spot for a two-way spot to try somebody out and see what they can do and see if they want to go forward with that player now that Jabari Parker is gone. Garrison Mark Matthews declined the two-way deal with the Celtics, so they couldn't use that spot for Garrison Matthews as he was not interested in being on the rosters. The Wazers will claim Joel off waivers. Um, he was waived, um, I think, two days ago, and the Wizards will definitely pick him up. He signed with the Lakers and started all five games for them in Summer League, and now he will get picked up and tried out by the Wizards. Um, at the end of the day, the Nets will also convert David, uh, Duke Jr. to a two-way deal. So they're going to see what he can do in their camp. They're going to see what he can, well, not in their camp. He can see what they do on their roster, what he can do in G League, what he can do in practice and see if they want to move forward with him in the future. The Cavaliers, like I said, will also convert RJ Nim hard to a two-way contract after they converted Taco Fall, so they're going to try him out. Chris Dunn was also waived by the Memphis Grizzlies, um, and they will also have Sam Merrill and Jared Culver. They will make opening roster spots. So Chris Dunn will no longer be on the roster. That will get them to a 15-man roster. The Grizzlies also did decide, like I say, to keep um, Sam and Jared Culver on the roster Dennis Smith Jr. makes Portland potential roster spot. Marquise Chris will be waived. Quinn Cook will not make this roster or Golden State as he was waived. And Patrick Patterson will also not make Portland roster as he was waived. So they decide to try out Dennis Smith Jr. for a little bit longer. Um, at the end of the day, Dennis Smith Jr. has made the opening run night roster for Portland. But these other guys did not make it. So we'll see if he can stay on the roster for the entire season. Dante Exxon was picked up by the Rockets. They will waive him and will go in a different direction with their roster spot with this young rebuilding team. They was interested in seeing what Dante Exxon can bring to the table. He was not able to stick on this roster and they will go in a different direction. Dante Exxon was a lottery pick, a top 10 pick that a lot of guys seen to his playmaking, his size and his ability to play multiple positions offensively and defensively. He was never able to stay healthy. He was never able to become a great offensive player. He was never able to become a great playmaker in the NBA and his future in the NBA is dwindling as he can barely be in the NBA within the next two years or completely be out as we see um, with him. Um, the Grizzly will also decline Jared Culver's option, which makes him waivable. Uh, Wayne Selden makes Nick's, third, Nick's opening roster, so he will make it. Nets will also waive Devontae Cook. Um, Jazz will convert Malik Fix to a two-way contract. Isaiah Hartenstein will make the final roster spot for the Clippers. Bulls convert Tyler Cook to a two-way contract. And that's really about all the news. The big news was obviously Mikael Bridges staying with the Suns. Now we just have to see what they do with Aiden. A lot of the teams have made their final cuts. The only thing that will be changing if somebody gets injured or they want to waive somebody some of these guys will have another crack at making a roster, but they will have to fight for it. They will have to earn it, and they will have to you know, do whatever they can to keep it for this entire season unless they will be waived again, and then they will be fighting for another chance to make a roster spot ultimately for another season. We're seeing a lot of young guys get these spots. A lot of these veterans that was proven players really can be skill set players not be legitimate NBA players to a lot of these teams as a lot of them are still free agents and a lot of these teams went for potential or guys that's athletic 
or guys that can prove a little bit more to them and they'd rather give them a roster spot than a lot of these veterans. There's a lot of big name veterans that have had reputations that are not currently in the NBA. It's unfortunate, but it is part of the game. You only get a certain amount of roster spots. You want to be able to make it as well rounded and potential and guys with, you know, ability to play in G League that you can bring up on two way contracts that interest you. So you still want the roster flexibility. You still want to have options, but you still want to have a combination of of veterans, youth, stars, all-stars, superstars, and guys that could potentially help you in other areas to make it more well-rounded with everything you're looking and interested for. If you're a GM, that just to let the fans know, that's why a lot of these guys are not on the roster. That's why a lot of these guys might not make it back to the NBA. And that's why a lot of these guys' careers are coming to an end later, earlier, or they just became buses in the NBA. And unfortunately, they have to eat another way because their ideal job of being in the NBA might be over or it might be closed for some players. It's sad. It happens. It's a reality for all hoopers, all people that play basketball. Sometimes you get in. Sometimes you can't stay in. Sometimes your time comes. Or sometimes you never come or play in the NBA. It's a reality that we all have to face one day. These guys are just going through it this season. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the rest of y'all day. I'll be coming to y'all with another video hopefully tomorrow. Enjoy the night. Enjoy y'all weekend. Quinn Wade, Basketball Nautilus is signing out. Do y'all thing.